We are at Gamescom 2016 and we've just been kicked off the stations for Titanfall 2. We've been playing the multiplayer here at, at Gamescom. Uh, we're catching up with Respawn, Mohammed and Joel. Uh, you know, first of all, let's let's talk about that that sort of that Gamescom experience. What is it that you're bringing to, to the show floor here this year? Uh, we have really good coverage. Uh, you know, I'm getting tired, winded, trying to run from each each spot that we're at. So it's fantastic to be at this point in the process, finishing the game, uh, finally really being able to show it off to the the community of gamers that you know we know and love. Uh, but yeah, it's it's exciting to be running from place to place and getting plenty of exercise doing that. <laughs> yeah, we'll be showing off a lot of multiplayer, a lot of single player. Uh, there's uh, we there's a lot more we brought to Titanfall 2 and. You'll be seeing a lot of that this week, so. Because that is kind of your, your division here. That's like single player, that's multiplayer. So I'm going to try and get you the right questions. And I will cover, I can speak to a lot of the art. <laughs> Mo is like the design master. But right. I, I can also help fill in on multiplayer. Yeah. Most oh, well, we'll see where he goes. I tonight. play a lot of, I'm kind of, a, I'm kind of addicted to it. Yeah. <laughs> that's going to make it hard for me to keep up you'll with the hearing, mic. You'll be hearing with, from an addict on multiplayer. I mean. <laughs> All right. But, we played uh, Amped Hardpoint, which is uh, a fascinating mode, very focused mode. Uh, what, how, how sort of, how would you say that that sort of is significant for the multiplayer that you're 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 bringing out with Titanfall 2? Is that is that sort of telling of the sort of the, the experience you want to bring, or is that sort of just one flavor? It's definitely one flavor. I think there are modes we haven't revealed that really speak to the like the real the. The gold that we've been looking for for a long time with Titanfall 2. Um, you know, Amped Hardpoint is an evolution of the uh, hardpoint that we had in the last game. I think it's just evolving it and tightening things up and making it a better experience for everybody. Playing with the motion models and the game overall. Uh, working the, the Titans into the game modes as much as possible with their new personalities and core power. Or core, uh, core upgrades. I forget what we're calling that right now. Core abilities. Core abilities, yeah, okay. See, he's good too. <laughs> it's good on the multiplayer. But yeah, it's uh, you know we're also showing bounty hunt on the floor as well here, which is a new game mode where I think you saw a little bit of E3, but it's also e it's already evolved a little bit more since E3. So you go in and uh, you have two factions. Your other side is playing for, and there's a neutral faction in the in the middle, the IMC, which is actually their points for both sides. And you're kind of you're fighting over those bounties, and each time you get a bounty. Uh, once the wave is completed, you'll actually end up going to these these cool like robotic mobile hardpoints that animate and open up and get ready whenever they're ready. They turn into essentially a bank, and you deposit your merit points that you earn from killing bounties to help your team win the round. Yeah, I think it's interesting because because Titanfall did something with that sort of those NPCs that was very different, and maybe not sort of took that all the way that it could like to its full potential. Do you feel that you're sort of trying to, to, to capture that more with, with Titanfall 2 to sort of, you know, because at some times it just felt like a distraction in Titanfall 1, but now perhaps there's like a little bit more to it. Yeah, I think going into Titanfall 2, having a much better understanding of how to utilize the AI. I mean, first, it, first game was more about, let's try to figure out how to do this. And now it's about, okay, we did it, let's figure out how to do it right. And so the AI plays a role in every game mode, and it's very, uh, the, the game mode works better with it. So, you know, they're not just there, they're there for a really good purpose, and we're working very hard to make sure that they're not an irritant and they're more of a gameplay, a fun gameplay mechanic. That's interesting. And we should move over to campaign, because you've sort of started to, I, I find it interesting, like, the kind of tone that you've chosen for the campaign, because it's, it's not one you would, always expect in this kind of game it's a little bit tongue-in-cheek uh what what went into that sort of that design choice so there's so many different things the main thing was coming off of titanfall one we had a lot of just really good gameplay mechanics and really good designs and what we didn't want to do was take those mechanics pick them up and just plop them into an existing single player design that you've seen in other games because that literally wouldn't show off our mechanics or our gameplay as well as it could we need to make a bespoke campaign that would show off what titanfall is problem though is there's nothing to go off of. What is a Titanfall single player? We didn't even know. So it took us years and years of iteration and iteration. We literally made hundreds and hundreds of like little what we call action blocks, little like set pieces that like had a little bit of gameplay in them. And over the course of that time, we narrowed it down to like what the best ones were and what we ended up with wasn't necessarily what we planned at the beginning. But we came up with a game that's extremely varied 
and has something for everybody in it. And the the uh, the bond that you create with your Titan BT seven two seven four, it just naturally became this almost like lighthearted levity to counteract the very deep, serious gameplay and other tones that are in the game. Maybe that is like not just that people players wanted a campaign, but maybe they wanted something lighthearted as well because. You know, learning a game can be a, a heartbreaking experience, and and maybe you need that sort of a little bit more relaxed atmosphere to actually for those who take a little bit longer to learn the mechanics, to learn the roles, to learn what what's up with it, and then maybe graduate into multiplayer. It was a, an opportunity for us to take the multiplayer titans and bring them into single player in a narrative, and your. Single player gives the, the average player the chance to jump into Titanfall. They're not very familiar with it. Mm. And we introduce things from multiplayer in the, in the story. So you encounter these things. You start seeing how certain Titans behave or what type of power uh, core, core abilities they have, what they're doing, how to approach them, what's the best tactic, what's the best weapon that works on these characters. And then you do have a good time doing it, but it's not, a, um, it's not as a, a, a crazy environment like multiplayer where you're playing against real people. And the threat, the threat level is just so high that you can't really take things in. Or for, you know, for the designers that are doing single player, they have the opportunity to slow the game down a little bit here and there, let you digest, do different things, try different, you know, there's puzzle mechanics in the game, which I wasn't, I wasn't completely expecting, and we pulled it off. I mean, I've already, I've been doing playthroughs, Mo's been doing the same thing. We've been playing through the game as we're making it, and I find myself, okay, I'm going to go home in an hour. And three hours later, it's two in the morning, I, I was just checking out one thing, and I end up, I'm playing through it again. I'm doing, you know, I just, I get stuck in it. So you got to, you got to tune down the challenge a little bit. There. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's uh, not just about the challenge though. It's, uh, it's speaking to how, like how engaging it is. Mm. Cause like I said, there's, you're going to do stuff in Titanfall 2 single player that you've never done before in another game. And you're not going to be able to do in any other game coming out this fall. Like I can confidently say that. It's interesting though because what you what you did with Titanfall One was trying to bring sort of a world view, a narrative into sort of a multiplayer environment and try to, to build that. What does single player sort of offer you in addition to that in terms of sort of building that, that universe? Well so much. So like he was saying, when you're in the middle of a multiplayer match, there's only so much you can pay attention to and focus on. So knowing that, uh, we kind of like just barely touched on the surface of the world and the characters and everything, we could deep dive much, much further in a like true single player campaign that like we could also like take our time with and develop further and things like that. Also the player can take it at his own pace. So, you know, if he wants to take it all in, there's like lots of little nooks and crannies that tell all kinds of stories that like you can just like really just throw yourself into. So we, we learned some stuff from multiplayer. I mean, with this, this really cool trick I thought was really neat going in the development process was we do a lot of these, these tests, like random tests with people coming in and playing the game in a completely unfinished version. You know, just seeing what happens, you know, not telling them anything and seeing what they naturally gravitate to is, uh, you know, their play style or whatever. Or do they get this or not get that or whatever? But one thing I liked about uh, some, some good results from all that stuff is they, they actually rigged up a program that could figure out where the player's eyes were moving on the screen and then it helped us dial into things. Uh, a good example is the, the video display unit that was in Titanfall 1, no one was looking at ever. It was just a distraction and it was taking up space on the screen and all you really needed was a visual cue on the periphery to know that someone else was talking to you. On a, so we ended up with a, an, an evolution of that which I think is almost a throwback to some cooler SNES games where like Blaster Master and some of the old, the old, the old greats that we all used to play and you end up with this really cool uh, like speak like a color ID, but it does it does a really great thing. It, it almost out of your periphery, you can see it's a bad guy or a good guy talking to you. And if you care to glance over, you get a really quick flash read on the personality of the character, and then the voice is all behind that. Mm. But it was just a great, you know, like having that experience from Titanfall One. It's just it was a great thing to see. Titanfall Two is about refinement and really realizing where to focus our energy and our efforts. And I think single player, when Mo's talking about how diverse it is, that really gave us the ability to go in and make an insanely diverse uh, set of levels and they all string together in this awesome story. So, You did talk about the, the Titans being sort of, the Titans from multiplayer being brought into single player, but I can also, on the sh I mean, 
just thinking about it, I could see that there could be even crazier Titans in single player because you don't have to balance them. Is that something you were considering or, or do you want to stick with what's sort of... So, this is such a difficult... So, the game is not going to feel different. If you play single player and you play multiplayer, you're gonna f it's all going to feel like Titanfall. But behind the hood, there's obviously different things we do to make multiplayer balanced versus single player is all about a power fantasy, right? And the right, the right amount of challenge and the right amount of personality and character in the Titans. So, there are subtle differences that to most people you won't really notice, but it'll feel right depending on which one you play. Interesting. I think it's worth mentioning that the, the 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 Titan that you're playing with, BT, is a brand new Titan that the militia. It's the first Titan the militia has actually built themselves, mm -hmm. and it does it does things that are extra. You know, they're out of the ordinary for a multiplayer Titan. So he has his own personality. The uh, the multiplayer Titans have their own personalities too. There's boy girl Titan. You know, there's Ion's a female Titan. You know, Scorch is a male. And then you go into single player, and instead of giving them voices, we gave them really cool pilots with lots of personality. And you know, it, it's just a great twist on all that stuff. But you still get that same feeling. All the mechanics are, you know, they feel exactly the same when you go back and forth, and it all kind of blends well together. One thing that we've sort of learned over the last few years is different name for different kinds of betas. There's developer betas, there's like alpha tests, there's beta tests, there's, there's technical betas as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're bringing out that. What, what, what's, uh, of course, that's obviously you want some sort of technical feedback. I can gather that. But oh, yeah. what, is it, yeah. what is it that, that players can expect and, and what will you get out of it? Uh, what we get out of it is exactly that. It's a technical stress test. And while this is happening, uh, we have you know, weekend one. They're going to watch that thing in real time. They're going to watch the players. Hopefully, you want it to break. We want yes. they want to break. We want everybody to help us break this thing. You know, come come and play. It's free. Come and join up, and we're going to break this thing. The better we break it now, the stronger it is launch day. We're going to do. What will happen is that you say that the useful part to us is we'll be watching in real time on the weekend. We'll have like a mission control set up at respawn headquarters. We'll be sitting there, you know, like all our amazingly talented net coders and everything will be there like working their working their butts off uh, but what what will happen is the week in between mm -hmm. they'll be making those modifications to the tech test and then rolling it out again the following weekend and saying hey we fixed some stuff is it working mm -hmm. so that's a good thing that we get out and of. if we can break it again we'll have another one the next week or <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i don't know yeah. at some point we got to ship this thing but uh, the the truth is actually even even between the two weekends, like even during that weekend, the whole the whole point of the infrastructure we put in right now is that we can fix it on the fly much faster than before, and that's part of the things we're testing. So even during that weekend, we'll be rolling out changes like completely hidden and like hopefully fixing problems that show up, and then the week in between is to fix the really big problems if they show up. Hopefully. Hopefully it's solid, but knowing how uh, most openings go, this like we will gain a lot of information, like you said, it's so we can have a really solid launch. Because what we don't want is for it to launch and people having problems to play. We want everyone to be able to play the day it launches, yeah, just rock solid. That stuff as much as possible. Um, I think I think it's not it's not a marketing tool. It's not to drive this or that in sales or whatever. It's honestly to make a better like break the game, make a better game, and deliver a solid product. Yeah. All right, because then it would be a little bit closer to release, probably, if it was simply a marketing. But yeah, nobody yeah. ever calls it a marketing beta. I've, yeah. I've never heard that, but <laughs> apparently it exists. We're, we're just crazy enough to be honest about this. <laughs> you know, honestly. <laughs> cool. Sounds great. Nice talking to you guys. Thank you very much. It was nice talking Thank to you. you. Thank you.